Welcome to this reading of the ninth and final chapter of Freedom for All by Neville Goddard. My name is Joanna and I will be reading for you today. Chapter 9 The Annunciation The use of a friend's voice to impregnate oneself with a desirable state is beautifully told in the story of the Immaculate Conception. It is recorded that God sent an angel to Mary to announce the birth of his son. The angel said unto her, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Luke 1, 30-37 This is the story that has been told for centuries the world over. But man was not told that it was written about himself, so he has failed to receive the benefit it was intended to give him. The story reveals the method by which the idea or word was made flesh. God, we are told, germinated or begat an idea, a son, without the aid of another. Then he placed his germinal idea in the womb of Mary, with the help of an angel who made the announcement to her and impregnated her with the idea. No simpler method was ever recorded of consciousness impregnating itself than is found in the story of the Immaculate Conception. The four characters of this drama of creation are the Father, the Son, Mary, and the Angel. The Father symbolizes your consciousness. The Son symbolizes your desire. Mary symbolizes your receptive attitude of mind and the angel symbolizes the method used to make the impregnation. The drama unfolds in this manner. The father begets a son without the aid of another. You define your objective. You clarify your desire without the help or suggestion of another. Then the father selects that angel who is best qualified to bear this message or germinal possibility to marry. You select the person in your world who would be sincerely thrilled in witnessing the fulfillment of your desire. Then Mary learns through the angel that she has already conceived a son without the aid of man. You assume a receptive attitude of mind, a listening attitude, and imagine you are hearing the voice of the one you have chosen to tell you what you desire to know. Imagine that you hear him tell you that you are and have that which you desire to be and to have. You remain in this receptive state until you feel the thrill of having heard the good and wonderful news. Then like Mary of the story, you go about your business in secret, telling no one of this wonderful and immaculate self-impregnation confident that in due season you will express this impression. The father generates the seed or germinal possibility of a son, but in a eugenic impregnation. He does not convey the spermatozoa from himself to the womb. He has it born through another medium. Consciousness desiring is the father generating the seed or idea. A clarified desire is the perfectly formed seed or the only begotten son. This seed is then carried from the father, consciousness desiring, to mother, consciousness of being and having the state desired. This change in consciousness is accomplished by the angel or imaginary voice of a friend telling you that you have already achieved your objective. 
The use of an angel or friend's voice to make a conscious impression is the shortest, safest, and surest way to be self-impregnated. With your desire properly defined, you assume an attitude of listening. Imagine you are hearing the voice of a friend. Then make him tell you, imagine he is telling you, how lucky and fortunate you are to have fully realized your desire. In this receptive attitude of mind, you are receiving the message of an angel. You are receiving the impression that you are and have that which you desire to be and to have. The emotional thrill of having heard that which you desire to hear is the moment of conception. It is the moment you become self-impregnated. The moment you actually feel you are now that or have that which you heretofore you but desire to be or to possess. As you emerge from this subjective experience, you, like Mary of the story, will know by your changed attitude of mind that you have conceived the sun, that you have fixed a definite subjective state, and will in a little while express or objectify this state. This book has been written to show you how to achieve your objectives. Apply the principle expressed herein and all the inhabitants of earth cannot stop you from realizing your desires. End of chapter 9 Thank you for listening to this reading of the ninth and final chapter of Freedom for All by Neville Goddard. Comment below any thoughts or takeaways from this book. If you like this video, found it helpful or valuable in any way, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon to get notified every time I upload a new video. Because this year, I am committed to helping you gain mastery over your mind and emotions. See you in the next video. Bye!